What's up guys, I'm Phoenix Master 1 and welcome to my builds guide and refined review of Fallen Julia, Lysithia, George, Bright Nyla and Lilith. So let us begin with Fallen Julia who in my opinion wins this weapon refinery badge with an amazing weapon refined to her dark scripture. So this does give her plus 3 attack and now she's able to ploy the enemies and this is going to be debuffing the enemy for the same condition, range and resistance check as a tier 4 ploy skill and you're going to be debuffing the foes in that range for minus 7 attack and resistance, the sabotage status, the deep wound status and also the null miracle status. So this is going to be quite anti sellif you're going to be ignoring any kind of non-special miracles and this is also going to be stopping any kind of healing of many of the tanks. So it does give her space to work in Aetherite's defense and she also is able to debuff the enemy for minus 10 attack and resistance and also minus 8 speed for some reason in the combat. She always gets the guaranteed follow up attack in the enemy phase and in the player phase she needs to be solo to get it and then she also has the follow up denial built in this refine and she also gets true damage based on 20% of her resistance so it does help her with the damage output. And then finally she has got Dragon Wall which does give her the damage reduction to survive a lot of the hits. So Fallen Julia functions as an amazing debuffer with the long range of her ploy skill and being able to debuff the opponent with the sabotage and the deep wound status from so far away is really really amazing. And if you're on fence on if you should be getting her as a Pharma unit or not, this is going to be solidifying your choice because if you got some good skills then she's really going to be shining with this kind of weapon refine that does so much for her and also allows her to function as a unique red infantry mage. So if you did get her uh, with the Forma skills then you probably got something like this. So attack resistance finish 4 is still going to be working out with her weapon refine giving you that healing and true damage and attack resistance tempo 4 is a lot better than her preferred light and dark skill because you're going to be getting the damage reduction piercing and the full tempo effect. So has got really good synergy with the finish skill and then you probably got a ploy skill. Now attack resistance ploy is going to be overlapping with the debuffs that she can do with her weapon but in my opinion it is still the best lots of skill for her because as it is you're going to be stacking up her resistance so you might as well get the ploy status on the enemy and also the exposure status. So with the ploy status you're going to be able to ignore the grand strategy and the bonus doubler and the treachery status effects of the enemies which is kind of big when you're going to be just debuffing them for quite a lot. So ignoring that grand strategy is really important in my opinion and you also get the exposure status on the enemy which gives you even more true damage so it helps you with your damage output. Flare can be run as the special with Emblem Marth but if you don't have Emblem Marth then you can still run Glimmer as a 2 cooldown special and it's just that we don't have the correct ploy skill for her but whenever it happens speed defense ploy 3 is going to be the perfect slots of skill that you can run on her so that she can debuff all stats of the enemies and also get a bunch of negative status effects active on them. You can run still water in her slot A and also run it in her sacred seal to just maximize your efficiency and then with emblem marth we're able to loop iceberg and again if you don't have emblem marth then glimmer is going to be the special of choice and then finally you can also run Fire Flood boost 3 on her so that you can get the guard effect, the extra HP and bulk and it goes really well with the full tempo effect that you can run in her slot B. It is pretty much going to be one of her best slot B options and in her sacred seal you should always be running still water because she does depend on her resistance for all of the checks for her weapon and also with the slot C scale. So these are going to be the main options that you can run on Fallen Julia after her refine. George actually gets an amazing weapon refine for a free to play unit and he doubles down and triples down on his supportive niche. So he did have the minus one special cooldown in his weapon and now he can give plus 5 attack and defense to the allies in the combat that are in 4 spaces of him. And he also gets minus 5 attack and defense crux in the 4 space range. So this allows you to get the guaranteed follow up attack on your units against those foes that are going to be suffering these debuffs. So you're going to be able to get the guaranteed follow up attack with units like Emblem Ike with Ashnard that don't really have guaranteed follow up attack in their weapon. There's also young Lissa coming out so she also lacks the guaranteed follow up attack and this can really help a lot of the units get that guaranteed follow up attack and that's why I say it's a crux skill because 
It is pretty much the attack and defense variant of Spring Chloe's Slotsy Scale. So this is very unique as a supportive weaponifying. And then at start of turn, to himself and the allies in two spaces, he's able to give the plus 6 attack and speed buff, the Hexblade status, and the special charges status. So Hexblade status helps you with the damage output against lopsided bulky enemies, but against a lot of the tanks that have good mixed bulk, it doesn't really do a whole lot. And then the special charges is going to be helping you loop stuff like godlike reflexes and trigger your special a lot easily. You're not exactly going to be using him in a Gale Force team in Aetherite's offense because Young Minerva is just going to be a better unit to do that with. But with any kind of tanking, getting the special charges status is going to be helping you just loop your specials. And then at the end, he's able to get plus 5 attack and defense in the combat. So he's able to get a lot of the things for himself in the combat and also provide amazing support to his allies and he's going to be enabling the usage of the prime skills by giving you two status effects so george becomes a really good support unit that he can now use and he doesn't really need any kind of merges to function at his peak performance when it comes to supporting his allies so you can just run him with defense rest link so that he can fully buff up all stats of allies and he can run double drive attack and this is going to be helping you in arena assault and also in the limited battles and if you want to invest a bit more into him and use him in Aetherite's offense, then that could be done with the tier 4 Rue skills. And you can also run an infantry null follow up as a Slotsy skill so that he can provide the null follow up status to his allies and also get it himself and also get the order status, which is going to be helping you with the mobility. And because he already buffs up the attack and speed of your units, you can just run Rally Defense Res to fully buff up that tank. So he's going to be functioning well as an Aetherite's offense unit and you can even use him by stacking up his HP, making use of sudden panic in the light season as Freya is not going to be cleansing that and also by running infantry pulse 4 in the slot C. And he can run dead eyes so that he can pierce with the damage reduction. That's going to be a 2 cooldown dead eyes so it does work out pretty well. So HP stacking is also a way of supporting our allies and you can also run Lagu's friend as the slot B scale because he's a pretty bulky archer. And being able to get that flat damage reduction base on defense and piercing the damage reduction of the enemy is going to be extremely valuable. So you can run that with Ignis and Emblem Eye could be used so that you can get that unpierceable damage reduction. And then you can just run Lagu's friend to be bulky. Attack defense finish 4 is actually a pretty good option for him because he does get the special charge of status. So he's going to be retaliating back with Ignis which is going to be doing a lot of damage and at the same time he's going to be quite bulky. Panic Smoke 4 is also an option that he can run, but if you don't really have it, then any kind of joint drive skill works out with George. And if you want to use Prime skill on him, then you can easily make use of it by running Infantry Null Follow Up 4 with his weapon. So he instantly gets 4 status effects, which allows you to function with the Prime skill. And again, Emblem Mike is going to be helping with the Ignis, with Lagoo's friend. So at max investment, this could be a build that he can run on George. Lysithia gets a decent refine to her Hades Omega and she did have minus on special cooldown. Now with her weapon refine, she's able to get plus an attack and speed in the combat and also attack and speed debuff neutralization. So any of those debuffs are not going to be slowing her down and she gets additional plus 7 attack and speed in the combat if her special cooldown count is at or below 2. And this is going to be taking at sort of combat. So it does work with the special jumping that she has got. And then she's got true damage based on 20% of her speed and she also has delt speed resistance even though she comes with loud speed resistance as part of her base kit still this is going to be a lot better as you can just run other slot b skills on her and then finally she gets special cooldown minus one jump before her first attack so this is essentially the anti scowl effect in her weapon and this does help against a lot of the scowl usage and also the harsh spectrum support that we've got with duo female robin so it does help as a nuke and she's mainly going to be functioning as a one-shot nuke which is not the most impressive role right now for a nuke but she's basically going to be doing that with this kind of weapon refine getting a lot of offenses and then getting the special jump so there are going to be straightforward ways of building her up and not a lot of wiggle room because she's mainly going to be depending on one-shotting the enemies so if you have extra break Soren, then you can easily make use of that, getting magical null follow up and time pulse 4. So we're going to be able to trigger flare because of the special jump in our weapon and you already bring down the cooldown of flare to 1 with time pulse 4. 
You can use Emblem Marth if you don't want to get scaled by the enemies. So that could be done. And her main slotty skill is going to be a talk speed finish for her because she's going to be triggering a lot of her specials. So getting that true damage and the healing is going to be the way to go. You can also use her with Special Spiral 4 to get that full damage reduction piercing. So it could be used with a high cooldown special like Dragon Fang. And you can try and stack up the true damage out of the slot A and slot B skill. And you can even run her with Astra with Emblemarth. But that is just a win more special. And not exactly going to be helping her against the tougher matchups. And you can also run attack speed Oath 4 as her slotsy skill to get the visible buffs. And also get the warping. So it's also an option if you're not going to be running time pulse 4. This is pretty much the way of building up Lysithia now after her weapon refine. And even if you don't have her at plus and merge. This is still going to be a build that you can use at plus one merge. Right now, Nyla got a pretty good weapon fine to her Bright's Fang and this did give her minus one special cooldown. And now she can heal up 7 HP after the combat. She also gets a pulse effect at sort of every turn so she gets minus one special cooldown. It's not exactly time pulse, it's kind of like the pulse up blades skill that we've seen before so it is going to be helpful in setting up the special spiral 4 that is built in her weapon refine. And now she can debuff the enemy for minus 9 attack speed and defense in the combat. And she also gets 40% damage reduction on foes first attacks including the brave hits. And now she has got the full special spiral 4 built in her weapon including the damage reduction piercing which is really valuable because she doesn't really have to run this in her slot B and can run the B skills now. And her B transformation bonus is going to be pretty important for her playstyle. So now she has got the modern beast infantry effect with the plus 7 true damage on the specials and the full tempo effect and she also gets the near trace effect built in this weapon and also gets plus one movement and unhindered movement status so she can function as a pseudo cavalry unit essentially with this extra movement and the unhindered movement status is going to be helping her get past those three tiles so bright nyla is able to function a lot better in the player phase and also in the enemy phase because of the damage reduction and special spiral four that she has got so this weapon refine is really huge with its text, but this is pretty much a simplified version of it. She gets a lot of things that you'd want on a beast infantry unit. And if you're trying to build her up on a budget, then you can simply give her a hit and run. So this way she's able to glare the enemy, just restrict their movement and run away with the Kanto in her weapon refine. And hit and run does help with the Kanto. So this is something you can run, but ultimately she's going to be wanting to run a B skill in her slot B because transformation is really important for the effects that she's got in her weapon refine. So Beast Agility 4 could be run so that you can get the full non follow up and also get a bit of true damage and then finish 4 can also be run and you're going to be looping Luna because of the special spiral 4 built in her weapon and you're also going to be piercing through the damage reduction so it does help quite a lot in nuking and then you can also run her with a prime scale because she already gets two status effects and the plus one movement and the unhindered movement. And then you can run the pled skill in her slot C and run attack out echo. So this way you're able to instantly activate the distant counter condition of the prime skill and retaliate back with ethers that are going to be boosted with emblem Ike. So that way you're able to get some kind of unpierceable damage reduction and beast sense four is going to be giving you that pierceable damage reduction and the phantom speed effect. So. It does help you tank the hits a lot better and this is definitely one of the max investment builds that Nyla can run after her weapon refine and running prime skill is definitely a lot easier for her now after getting the two status effects from her refine. Lilith gets a weapon refine so that she can compete with her fallen version and Astral Breath did give her plus 3 speed and now it has got the full non-fall lower built in so she's able to get the two space warping to her support partner just like Fallen Lilith and at sort of turn she's able to give herself and the support partner in 3 spaces the plus 6 speed and defense and resistance buff and also the dot status and then she can get up to plus 13 to all of her stats and this is going to be having the clash condition so it goes really well with the warping that she has got so it is going to be taking the spaces moved by whoever initiated combat and then it is going to be adding it with 9 essentially so this way you're able to get a lot of the stats in the combat and she also gets 7 HP healing after the combat. And she's also able to get true damage based on the highest total buffs among herself and the allies in two spaces. So because she gives the plus 6 speed defense and resistance buff, she's going to be getting like plus 18 true damage essentially. And even if the enemy has got some kind of lull skill, 
We're going to be counting the visible buffs of the allies in two spaces, so it can work out even if the enemy has got the lull skill. And this is going to be improving her damage output, so she could be used as a support unit in Gale Force teams in Aetherid's offense, and she doesn't really have to depend on Wings of Mercy to warp to her support partner. But the problem is that she's a dragon unit, she can only get Gale Force, and getting those extra actions on a Gale Force team really matters so that you can get to the pods, trap the units and do a lot of the things with the Gale Force team. So unfortunately it is still going to be a very competitive spot for her in Aetherite's offense Gale Force teams. And whenever we get the tier 4 version of Speed Resistance Neatrace, that is going to be a really good effect for Aetherite's offense. So now that she has got the Null Follow Up in her weapon, she's able to use Wind Sweep as the sloppy skill and you can run Attack Speed Clash. It is going to be having good synergy with her weapon as it already has the Spectrum Clash built in it. And Glimmer could be run with Emblem Marth for a one cooldown special and you can trigger your Glimmer on the double attack. Soaring Guidance or Guidance 4 are going to be the option for the Slotsy. And if you're going to be running Soaring Echo as the Attune skill, then you can definitely try and run Deadly Miasma. And whenever the tier 4 version of Speed Resistance Neatrace comes out, that is going to be a good sloppy skill to be run because you're going to be able to get fixed Kanto 2 even after warping. So it's going to be an amazing skill in the future. And you can also run her with Flared Sparrow. Just keep in mind to not run Deadly Miasma with Flared Sparrow as it does clash with the terrain effects. And you can run Flared Sparrow and Occultist Strike to stack up the pre-combat damage and function offensively. And the slot C attack speed rain snap is going to be an option if you're going to be running Soaring Echo as the attuned skill. You can click the link on your screen right now to check out my breakdown of the new Awakening banner and make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because YouTube sub boxes are about as functional as the options for a flying dragon. So that's it. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.